So let me just say again, this is your worksheet. You're gonna get credit for turning this in as participation, we're doing it all together. On the back side, you should cross out this part. We're not gonna do this part, not gonna worry about it. And this part on the bottom needs to be turned in. You need to do it yourself as homework. It just talks about the relationship between different people. What? The thing at the top, the pop section. Notice that the font's different. They're actually taken from different worksheets. Okay, so I want you to read through the beginning of this and underline anything you might think is important. So you always want to read your question first so you know what they're asking for. So as I'm reading, some important things I notice is that they say green hair is a recessive trait. Great grandma and great grandpa Berg, so these two people both have green hair. So obviously, if it's colored in, so if it's dark, then it's going to be green hair. So everyone with a dark shape in here has green hair. Um, if you keep on reading, you notice that all the other children have black hair, so that must be your dominant trait. And if you read down below, it says all the shapes represent family members with green hair, which we already talked about. Okay, the pedigree also doesn't show who's a carrier in here, so that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what is everyone's genotype and who, if any of these people have, are carriers or they have half their shape colored in. So if you look at your notes that we just took, I'd have these out beside you. What's the first thing that we're supposed to do? Number each person. Okay, we talked about it's not very important for this one because they have names. So we'll go to step number two. What should we do? Okay, you're going to identify your dominant and recessive traits. Very good. So we already said green hair. We found out right here. It says green hair is a recessive trait. So let's use G since we're talking about green. We're going to say that a big G is going to be our dominant color, which is black, according to your word problem. And little G is the recessive color, and it's going to be green. Green hair? Yep. Okay, so if you look at all these people, so if you look at all these people, just borrow a pencil, please. So if you look at these people and they all have green hair, what should their genotype be then? Little g, little g, thanks. So you, the next thing you want to do is write in the genotypes for as many people as that you know. So we know that all people that are, have a dark shape are little g, little g. Another way you can tell from a pedigree if a trait is recessive or dominant, there'll be more of the dominant people in the family than the recessive ones. So if you were to count all the clear shapes, there are more of those in the dark shapes. That's an unscientific way of doing it, but you can kind of figure it out that way. I'm going to go up here because we're not going to need the rest of that for right now. Okay, so our next part. Step number, we did step number two. We identified our dominant and recessive traits. We wrote the genotypes for as many people as we can. Now step number four says use Punnett squares to solve for unknown genotypes and you need to use scratch paper. So let's go on to our questions because we don't know who we're looking for yet and the questions will tell us what to do. So A. Question A says, which if any of Bobby's three sisters are carriers for the gene of green hair as well? Well, this is Bobby, and these are his sisters. We have Brooke, Bess, and Bianca. You can see why it's sometimes nicer to number them because it's really annoying, you know, pronouncing names in some families, well, or if they all have B names. Okay, so we know that Becky is little g, little g, but Billy has black hair. If he has a dominant trait, what two possible genotypes could he have? Okay, big G, little g, he can have this, or what's something else he could have? Big G, big G. Okay, but we don't know what he has. There's no way to tell by looking at him. You can look at his children, you notice that they all do not have green hair. The only way to figure out what he has is to do a Punnett square and to see if it matches or is close to what his family actually is. So this is how you're going to do that. So you're going to do two Punnett squares each time you do, there's something you don't know. So we're going to do a Punnett square one. The person at the top we're going to keep as a dad. So this is going to be Billy. So we guess he could be either big G, big G, or this is what you should be doing in your scratch paper. Or he could be a big G, little g. His wife, oh, yeah, his wife, Becky, 
this little g little g so we'll just fill her in on the side okay so you need to do the Punnett square for these two people or not these two people these two situations and see which one will be most likely to be the genotype for Billy and it will be pretty obvious let me give you a few seconds to do that Okay, for time's sake, I'm going to start doing it too. So, if we fill this one in. We have all these people, all the children, there's 100% probability of having kids that are carriers for this little G green gene. If we fill out over here. There's a 50% chance that they'll have black hair with B and B carriers and there's a 50% chance that they're gonna have green hair. So based upon what you see in their children, that they all have black hair, which genotype do you think that Billy should be? Big G, big G. Yeah, he's probably gonna be big G, big G. So we're gonna cross out that. We're gonna make Billy big G, big G. That means that all his daughters and all his kids are gonna be carriers. So the next question we're going to do is the same thing. You're going to know Bobby's genotype, but you're not going to know his wife's genotype, so you're going to have to do a Punnett square again. G, little g, so they are all carriers. I know, it's kind of annoying, huh? They actually do that in the Philippines a lot. A lot of people will have the name like Donna, Don Don, Danica, Denise, it's just crazy. They don't do that in America as often. Okay, we're gonna go on for time's sake, so pay attention. And we might finish the rest of this tomorrow, but you get the gist, the gist of how you solve for it. So same thing, here we know Bobby's genotype, we know what all his kids are, but we have no idea what Beth is because she has a clear shape. But we know she doesn't have green hair because she doesn't have a little g, little g, and it's not colored in. So just like Billy, what are the two possibilities of genotypes that she can have? Big G, big G or big G, little g. So let's fill out Punnett squares and test both of those, crossing her with Bobby. So Bobby is big G, little g. We'll always put the man on this top part to stay consistent. And then Beth is either a big G, big G, or a big G, little g. So I'm just gonna fill this in fast, follow along so you get it. Okay, so if you look at big G, little g, sorry, big G, big G, this is Beth. This is Bobby up here. If we look at the possibilities for what kind of kids they have, 50% could have black hair and 50% could have black hair and be carriers. If you look at your pedigree chart, do any of them have black hair? None of them do. So obviously, here, this kid's going to have black hair. This kid's going to be a carrier, a carrier. But there's a 25% chance that one of the, well, that their kids could have green hair. And that's a probability again. So it's just the chance that they'll get it. But they actually ended up with three kids with green hair. So this is going to be the correct one. Beth is going to be big G, little g. And that's how you solve it. So anytime you get to a spot and you don't know what they are, as long as they have a spouse and some kids, you can work backwards and test what kind of genotype they are by doing a Punnett square. So you'll have to test one and test the other. Here's another way to look at it really quickly. If you have a mom and if you have a dad, and this was Bobby, this is Beth, we already knew Bobby's genotype was a big G, little g. All their kids over here, all their kids are little g, little g. The mom we didn't know about. If the mom was a big G, big G, 
she could only give a big G to her kids. Little, one of the little Gs would come to the dad. But you need one little G from each parent since you get 50% of your DNA from your dad and 50% from your mom. So she would have to be big G, little G, so she could give that little G over to her kids. Okay, we will finish this worksheet tomorrow. Actually, you know what? You can finish this on your own. This question's very easy to do. And you also need to fill out this back side, this part on your own. So that's going to be your homework, to finish the last question about Bunny and then to do the homework on the bottom.